Welcome back. You're now watching the political segment on The Weekend Show. You've heard from the streets what people think about the current economic situation in the country. But joining us in the studio, we have analysts who will share their own thoughts on um, the increased cost of living, the fault subsidy removal, and the expectations of the current administration. In the studio, I have Fatai Adeshoka, a public analyst. Welcome to The Weekend Show, sir. Thanks for having me. Joining us virtually, I also have Mayo Atijani, uh, an economist and a media practitioner. And we also have Honorable Obiora Ifo, the National Publicity Secretary of the Labour Party. I'll start with Honorable Obiora Ifo, who is the um, National Publicity Secretary of the Labour Party, and Mayo. Um, so we'll have that conversation. But let's start with you in the studio, um, Fatai. President Bola Metinbu has been inaugurated as president for about 50 days now. Yes. We knew that it's going to be trying times. We knew there will be um, top hurdles ahead of him. But in the last 50 days, we've gone from the promise of renewed hope to now seeing Nigeria and saying this is a little too much. What's your take on this? <coughs> By and large, um, very unfortunate. We have. We have found ourselves in this um, economic quagmire. Um, it was foretold. You recall that in 2011, under good luck, Ebele Jonathan, the then CBN governor, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, and Minister of Finance, Mrs. Okonjo Weala, did tell us that um, Nigeria is becoming insolvent and we can no longer sustain the subsidy regime of everything, that we should rather focus on um, local production of our crude and um, whereby they should increase pump price to 110 naira. The whole country went into protest. There were no, there were cabals, there were corruption and what have you. And it came to pass. By the time Buhari became president in 2015, states were struggling to pay salaries. Over 25 states were struggling to pay salaries, except Lagos, Rivers, Kano, and two others. And if you look at what has happened in the last eight years under Buhari, government kept on borrowing to actually fund budget deficits. And now Nigeria is on 46 trillion. I'm trying to give us a background. Nigeria is on 46 trillion in our debt. Debt is not the problem. But we could not find to what exactly that this 46 trillion has actually gone into in the last eight years. If we had a government for eight years, plus other government have been in place, and Nigeria refuses to have our own refinery for local co-production of our own crude, for local consumption. There is problem somewhere. So we are not a serious country. That's the fact. So this government came into being and looking for finance because the government practically had become insolvent. Don't let anybody deceive us. The government is insolvent. If you look at what um, NNPC GMD told us about six weeks ago, that they're actually spending NNPC cash flow to cushion the effect of subsidy. And 400 billion are going into this every month, and that's 2.4 trillion. And this government is looking for a way that they will not go and borrow and finance budget deficits. But that is not an excuse anyway, because you cannot push inadequacy or ineptitude of governance of successive leadership in our government in the last 30 years to we citizens. But where do we go from here? From frying pan to fire. We need to bread it. But, but for me, I believe Mr. President should look inward. What can we do? Can we sustain this off subsidy regime? No because 670, 650, 620, because the adverse effect on the commodities is, is so enormous. If you are buying, for instance, orange, banana, in a place like Ibadan, Lagos, that things are coming from Edo State or from Ondo State to Lagos, Ibadan, the cost of transportation will be added up. And that means you and I cannot afford to buy oranges. We cannot afford to buy banana. If I'm spending a thousand naira on a banana, or an orange, how much is food? Look at it. You see, that was, those are the things we need to look at. But for me, I think government needs to rethink and sit right on this window. Our refinery must work locally. And we are actually resorting into Dangote refinery and Boa that is coming up in December. Until unless we have that crude refined locally, we continue to lament, we continue to be lying to ourselves on it. That's really I around. think that's a good and honest start to it. But I have um, Honorable Obi Arai for the Acting Labour Party, um, the Acting Labour Party Publicity Secretary. Good morning, um, Honorable Obi Arai. Can you hear me? 
Yes, I can hear you very well. Okay, great. Let's go straight to it. Um, over 50 days in as new president, we've seen the dollar go to about 870 um, naira as of yesterday. We've seen fuel prices go to 617 naira. And we've seen in our Vox Pop with Nigerians complaining about the effects of these changes. What's the position of the Labour Party on the current state of the economy? Thank you very much for the question. I, it's a, a bleak situation for the nation because things have gotten from that world. Things don't seem to be uh, together again. And every Nigeria, both rich and poor, have blamed the cause, have blamed the things for this happening. Nobody can predict what will happen in this day. Because we have a system that is unpredictable. A system that just wakes up every morning and decides what to do without putting the nation into consideration. That is where we are today. The, the dollar, Naira is uh, going down every other day. The, just about 800 that we are looking at a situation where dollar uh, will stand for dollar will stand for 900 very soon. And the issue of um, petroleum pump price, we are witness that by 2015, petroleum was selling at 80s, below 19 naira. But the moment the APC government got into trouble, they were selling. At 620 in some places and some places, and the prediction out there is that very soon it will get up to 1,000. So, and the one thing about it is that the government has not done anything. We are almost two months into this government, and they are watching Nigerians live in pain from penury, and nobody is coming to the rescue of Nigerians. We have said it and said it loud and clear that Nigerians should give their escape for other times. But things are going to get more difficult in this country if we do not speak up, if we do not hold this government to account. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Obiara. Let's bring Maiwa in. Maiwa, before um, this government was sworn into power, you were on the weekend. You know, we've spoken about fuel subsidy removal um, and inflation, but now we are seeing work in progress. What's your overview and forecast with the current situation um, with the fuel subsidy removal and the dollar to naira exchange, Maiwa? You know, one of the things that I have said recently is that may we be prepared for the things we pray for. Um, a lot of Nigerians, including myself, have been asking um, that the whole subsidy regime is not something that we felt was sustainable for us as a country. And now the subsidy has been removed and we're in a position where um, bond prices have gone astronomically high, higher than many of us anticipated. And of course, the dollar exchange rates has also, dollar naira exchange rate has also been a problem. Now, one thing is clear. These policies in themselves, I, I, I'll still stand by the fact that they are in themselves good policies. But I would say that the implementation, the timing, and then the lack of complete policy direction is the problem that we are facing right now. It's um, over 50 days since this administration came on board and we do not have a substantive CBN governor. We do not have a minister of finance. We do not have a minister of budget and national plan, I mean, which are like the key drivers of the economy, the key drivers of what our direction should be in in a situation like this that we're finding ourselves. So I think that I still stand by the fact that the policy in themselves are good policies, but we might have bungled the way we are going about it. So what do you propose should be the right strategies 
um, to get us out of this situation which we are in because um, it affects everybody from the top to the bottom. And I was just saying earlier, this week alone, um, in four days, so four or five days, I spent 24,000 naira on fuel. Um, and when you now hold, take into account the people who have to use public transport, I know staff who haven't been able to make it to work because of how expensive transport is in CT um, lately. What would be a good way to guide the policy direction um, for sustainable change? So uh, I'll say that first, uh, the, the, the first thing to deal with is actually the currency exchange right now. One of the reasons why um, we saw an increase from pump price from what we had last month and this month is because there has been a change in the um, dollar rates, so to say. So um, people who were the oil marketers, quote unquote, who were buying um, the dollar at about 700, 720 as of last month to import some of the um, PMS are now having to buy the same at 800. If we don't curb, if we if we don't fix that problem by next month, they might have to buy at 900. And if that happens, of course, the pump price is going to increase again. So I think that we need to um, we need like an emergency solution to stabilizing the currency without, of course, bungling the policy. That's number one. Then number two, we also need like carefully thought out palliatives. I I know that. Um, there's been a lot of talk around the unsustainability of palliatives, but I think at this time, at least within the next three to six months, the government needs to um, find a clever way to subsidize transportation, um, find a clever way to make sure that they can deal. I, I know that um, there was, I saw one of the policy um, thoughts, basically policy patterns that the government was trying to um, see how they can get some form of subsidy to transport workers, which will, of course, reduce the prices for transportation within the country. If that's something that can be done as quickly as possible, that's something I f believe that would work in the very short term. But I think that the first and utmost thing to deal with right now is actually the currency crisis. I agree with you, Mayowa, um, and definitely within the next three weeks to a month, we'll bring you back to review this. Final question before I let you go, Mayowa. Um, do you think the dollar to naira price um, rate would ever go down? Because we barely see that go down. Um, it keeps on defying gravity. Do you actually see that going right. down if there's some influx? Um, yes, I, 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 see it, I see it going down. I see the dollar to naira rate stabilizing. Um, we've seen it before. In 2022, when um, the then BN governor came out to say that politicians should no longer buy um, Naira, should no longer use their Naira to buy dollar. And when, of course, he announced the currency change policy, a lot of politicians were buying dollars off the market at the time. We saw the prices go as high as 840. And then it came back as low as 737 within a space of two, three months. So I think right now we are experiencing some rush. There is um, a clearing of backlog. Um, foreign companies are taking out some of their monies that has been stuck in Nigeria for years. So there's there's a lot that is there's a lot of pressure on the market right now. I feel like when we get to stability, in the sense that all the companies that need to take money out have done so, all the companies that are planning to bring money in have done so, then there's some form of equilibrium in the system. We would see the currency strength. How, how strong it would get is that's one thing that we cannot predict right now. But I personally believe that we might be hanging somewhere around 700 at the end of the day. Thank you very much, Maiwa, for your contribution. And we'll definitely bring you back on next time. Thank you very much. Honorable Thank Obiora, you. I'll you let you um, give your own final words. What do you think should be done at this point? We've, we had um, Peter Albi when he was contesting saying we need to stop borrowing for consumption. What do you think needs to be done at the moment um, to ease the fears and concerns of Nigerians? Okay, while we try to get um, Honorable Obiora back, you've had Mayowa, who yes. he was on this show and he had said all of this would happen. Mm -hmm. But he has also said um, there's a bit of optimism that things may get better. Of course, um, there are a lot of optimism until unless we have this um, less pressure on dollar, and that is what these marketers are doing. We, we are still importing fuel. No serious country does that. 
and that we are in AIT studio in Abuja here yeah, and we are open to eat in the afternoon and our food is coming from Lagos. They have not even gone to the market. So mm -hmm. that means our destiny is not in our hands. And look at the cost that will be involved, even if that is coming by air or by road. The cost, the time and what have you. So our destiny is not in our hands in this country. So I have a question. Some people have said that rather than giving palliative, why hasn't the federal government used the money to fix our refineries? President Buhari had said before he became president that anybody saying subsidy is scamming us and deceiving us. But he went on to spend trillions on subsidy. Now um, they say Dangote refinery did a grand opening, but no production yes. yet. Do you think instead of giving palliatives, that money would have been used or should be used to fix I our refineries? I don't envy this um, regime that, is just, that just came into being. Ashiwa Jubala met in Ubuzre. I don't envy them at all. They, they, I mean, government is about inheritance of liabilities and assets. What they've inherited in terms of liability is so enormous. And the government of two months old, there is barely they could achieve. I agree with my award that by now, key components of governance, I mean, cabinet members, ought to have been been in place, particularly CBN, finance, economy, and budget, so we can have key policy direction of this government. But be that as it may, you will, not, you will recall that um, successive government of this country actually failed, in particular, the last regime. Mm. For eight years is enough. It was enough for him to have actually even go into a kind of PPP arrangement to have a refinery working locally. And if a government stood for eight years and nothing was actually delivered. It was a disaster to say that's the truth. Um, pardon my language. It, it, it was so disastrous that we had a government in place for eight years. Forgetting Jonathan's regime, Yara Adra's regime, or Basanjo's regime, you had eight years. It's just like being in school for eight years. Your mates are graduating or they've graduated two years back. You are still in school eight years after for a four years course. There is problem somewhere. There is problem somewhere. So we need to be patient to, to an extent with this government. Because they cannot fix the final in six months, in one year. I saw Temi Presiva as cabinet member. I mean, signing of a contract of almost $2 billion, turn and turn and maintenance, but I caught with only a final For crying out loud, to achieve what? Just for you to do it, we'll be so unfortunate with people that has led us in this country. So I can't hold this man for, for now because it's just barely two months until we are now seeing 12 months, 16 months, 18 months. But for now, it's still premature but, economically to but predict. But in, in barely two months, um, he knew the task he was up against. Of course. And he's been saying this is his lifelong desire. Yes. First of all, like we all know, we don't have a CBN governor right now. Yes. We don't have a head of EFCC. Yes. You've dissolved all the boards. Proper planning states that before you take these decisions, you would have already prepared for replacements. And this is what would have been expected. But we don't have that. Now, removal of policy of um, fault subsidy, his team has said it wasn't in his speech. He has said that, and so he just decided. That was too much of a spontaneous move, which has gotten us in this position where we are right now. And it's understandable, but being able to do things in phases would have helped. Second part is understanding the needs and problems of Nigerians. You decide you want to get an $800 million loan from the oh, World man. Bank. From it, I understand with agriculture, I understand with the judiciary, I understand with capital projects, okay. but you put 70 billion naira for the National Assembly. Is this just to get their approval or who's going to pay for that? You and I? Um, people seem to be so much um, um, not so comfortable with allocation to National Assembly. I'm not doing brief for them, I'm not one of them anyway. And um, I think um, we need to be very, very uh, objective when we are talking about National Assembly allocation. You see, these billions of a thing is not the problem. Our Nigerian problem has always been money allocated for projects are not there. We saw how a fellow was, I mean, fainted before the House of Reps. So that some people would just come and say, oh, snake actually swallowed their money. You see corruption at, at, all, at all levels of governance. You see a Lagos Ibadi Expressway for more than 20 years. A government that was never in being now came. So cook money. The road is not, it's not done yet. We've seen Ibadan, Yogbomosho. We've seen Shagamu Beni Expressway. Um, when Jonathan was there, he said, oh, in, by, in two years' time, in three years, the road is still there. If you are coming from Beni, from, go to Beni from uh, Ubo, Ubo to Shagamu, you see that road, just half done. So we are not serious as a country. So for me, allocation of 70 billion to National Assembly is not a problem. 
what are, what have you allocated for our roads for our schools it's a problem because nigerians would have to pay i saw, I, I watched on the on tv yesterday where um the frs has said in 2024 they want to get about i think 23 trillion in taxes Yes. When we pay these taxes, and yes. I agree Nigerians must pay taxes, and then you are using taxpayers' money to repay debts when they're 70 billion. I think it's something which we should be concerned about. We should be concerned based on what? Based on the fact that what is the output from the National Assembly? And the Constitution actually availed them to be members of the National Assembly by camera, the Senate and the House of Reps. Until unless we abolish such arrangement the, before yeah. we can talk about any other thing. In as much as we have such arrangement in a presidential democracy that we operate, it is we to decide to model our own democracy that these things as subsidy regime is no longer sustainable, bicameral legislature is no longer sustainable. Until unless that is achieved, it is not the fault of Mr. President to have allocated 70 billion or two ever to the National Assembly. But they are in numbers and you have to cater for them. That's the truth. It's just like you having children. So you are, we are spending too much in this house. Until unless you transfer one, some of those children out of the, that house, you continue feeding them. That's the truth. Until unless the Nigerian constitution address that, the Nigerian economy can no longer sustain by camera legislature. That is where Mr. President can fold up his arms. And say, oh, since we have single legislature now, let's go on with it. You can't expect the people making the laws, getting the <laughs> best of the benefits <laughs> to abolish this. But final note, um, and Director, please let me know if we have Honorable Obiora um, available for his final comment. Okay, but let's give you on the final note. We've seen names of people who may become ministers in this administration. A good 20% of them would be former governors. Yes. We saw President Buhari take six months to appoint um, a cabinet. Yes. And we had, in several cases, some ministers, and I'll say education, who was out of the country for the longest time. Yes. We saw how long we were on strike. Having these former governors back as ministers, including some who were seen on camera stuffing money in the Agbada and all whatnot, which is in the public domain, so this is not slight to anybody. And some of these names keep on coming up. We've seen some former governors who have had corruption cases who will be on this list. So when we say we should give this man, the president, a chance, does this look hopeful to Nigerians when we see some of these people who are coming back? Well, in as much as I share sentiments of um, former governors coming on to the cabinet, I must say that um, within Nigerian political context, you cannot shy away from certain facts. Mr. President can never look away from these former governors. And those are key critical stakeholders that are actually made him the candidate of their party. And those are key critical stakeholders that made him actually won the election as declared by INEC, so to speak. So you always find these former governors on board. That's the truth. You always find them. And without mentioning names, you've seen names flying from Kano to Kaduna to KB and, and the likes. I think what should be of, of, of importance to Mr. President is um, appraisal of those ministries and deliverables. If you are coming on board in my cabinet as a president, it's no longer business as usual unlike you did in your own states. And we have mandate of delivery for Nigerians. And how do we achieve that? So the reason we are talking about policy direction of government, the CBN is a key component of the economy that Mr. President must look inward quickly. Uh, we can't spend the whole years finding a Mayfile looking for a Mayfile. The deal has been done. Or versus how do we move forward from here? Looking forward is, is what we should consider. The power sector is there, being epileptic. The infrastructure is there, the education is there, the health is there, and we are talking about, and we run generator economy. So this fuel of a thing is central to our life, because it's generator economy. Because without fuel, we can't do anything in this country. I think I need to bring you back. Let's continue this conversation. But yes, we need solutions, and the, government, the president has to look inward. And he also needs to show political will and hasten the process of being in power because we thought you know it is a hundred days and then it's four years and we the situation in nigeria we can't afford to wait while people suffer while policies are great implementation matters while you implement strategy does matter and that's the much we're going to take on today's episode of the weekend show you can watch this episode and previous episodes on youtube at weekend show ng you can follow us on social media at weekend show ng on facebook instagram and Twitter. You can also follow me on all social media platforms at Andy Madaki. Once again, I want to thank you for investing your time in watching the, the weekend show. We will see you next weekend. So do have a blessed week.